Hey guys, so this is the second part of the tutorial. Um, here I end up exporting this guy into Photoshop. Uh, right now I'm playing around with different mad caps. You can download some of these at ZBrush Central. These are the ones that are standard to ZBrush, I believe. Some pretty weird ones. They look a lot better when you hit render, but I'm just using the live view. So these are the four that I downloaded. Trying to position to a cool little pose, I guess. I was just turning on and off the perspective. You end up exporting as a TIFF. And here it crashed a little bit, so I had to reposition him. Kind of lost that pose that I had before, so I kind of have to start over here. Next port does a TIFF again. And basically what a TIFF does is just whatever you see on the screen now, that's what it's going to look like in the TIFF. So I changed the t materials and saved it out again. So I think I ended up doing like four of these. Ended up using one or two at the final one. And here I'm saving out an alpha channel around this guy. So this is the fourth one. And this is the alpha channel. You gotta hit render VPR and then it'll render the whole thing and give you an alpha channel, which is right there. Save that out as a TIFF too. And then open up Photoshop, open all of them and pretty much just copy and paste them all into one document in different layers. Clean up the alpha mask a little bit. Yeah, I'm just turning them on and off to see what I'm gonna use and what I'm gonna get rid of. Um, cycling through different layer modes. So yeah, I think these are the two or three that I ended up using. And then once I like something, I just collapse it all into one file or one layer. And just recropped it. and just pretty much started painting it on a new layer. And just pushing the darks a little bit more and some more highlights. Again, there's like a whole bunch of different ways of doing this. I just happened to do it this way, this one time. Some other time I might render it out a little bit more or spend some more time coming up with different overlays. So I used uh, alpha mask to select him and then paint inside of it. So it's not really affecting the outside of it, of him.
I'm gonna create a new layer for the light. And one more layer to pretty much start doing a detail, I think. I uh, created an adjustment layer just to mess around with the different colors of them. And what an adjustment layer does basically affects every layer that's underneath it. And it's not destructive, which is pretty cool. You could always go back and change it. So here I created uh, another regular layer and pretty much starting to do some more details on him. This is probably one of the most fun stages. You could do a lot more in ZBrush and then won't have to do this in Photoshop, but I don't know. I like painting personally, so I might have doing all the details in Photoshop. And having like a ZBrush base definitely helps you remember the forms and which way they turn, which way they face. So it's a good learning tool as well. I'm just using a regular standard brush here. What opacity is set to pressure sensitivity? Gotta throw in a rip deer in there. This guy's been through some shit. He's not too happy about it either. <laughs> I was gonna put a earring on him, but it seems like everybody's doing that, so I decided to take it out. Here I'm kind of cleaning up the outside and didn't really like the way his head was shaped. So I decided to paint that out and I uh, created a new layer. Just decided to see how he looks with some hair. It gives him a totally different personality. It tells you what you want to do and not do. But oh, Magua hair over here. If you haven't seen it, I recommend watching it. Great movie. Last of the Mohicans. I 
think I spent a little too much time working on this area here. So that was like maybe five, ten minutes. And here I decided to get some textures from the internet. Um, found a chicken that was lit pretty cool. Things like some cooking show or don't even know where it was from. Hopefully I don't get in trouble for using it. So I transformed it and just trying to make a match the perspective of his head a little more. And again, I don't recommend relying on photographs too much. It's a good tool, but that's all it really is. It's a tool. <clears throat> Just kind of moving it around, see where it looks pretty cool. I think he's, yeah, I think I erased most of it, don't really use it at all. I think I'm going to lip a little bit. Turn down the opacity so it's not so in your face. Uh, here I found a photo of some old dude. He's got some pretty cool wrinkles in his eyes, so I think that's what I ended up using. So the only part that I'm really looking at is the wrinkle in his eye and where I could attach it to. set it to overlay here and um, pretty much erase the whole thing except like above his um, tooth I guess or his lip it's hard to see it so I'm adjusting the levels on it to bring the darks up a little more made a copy of it and trying to see where else I could put it dropped opacity down and erase what I don't need. Didn't really like the position of it, so I decided to put the creases coming out of his eye instead. checking where else I could put it. Stinging like something for the forehead. <laughs> it's kind of interesting how the eyes lined up. Yeah, I don't think I ended up using any of it. So here I decided to paint some eyes. On this one, I decided to do them on the side here. That way I could have, I can move them around on their own layer and get them positioned the way I'd like.
dropped opacity and pretty much just erase around it. To everything that's covered by the lid. I don't know, there's something about the left eye that I didn't like, so I'll try it again. Still didn't like it, and I think I ended up just erasing it. My guy's got a scar through his eye, and he's blind in one eye. Here I'm just like fixing the alpha channel since I painted it in a little bit. Then I inverted it and just trying to change the background a little bit, give it like a little bit of a gradient. Then inverted it and uh, trying to give them a little more volume. And then set it to multiply, I think. I left it as normal and set it erase out of it. Kind of helps with depth. So here I create a new layer and then stroke that selection that I had around them to give them a, a secondary light source. So there's like a light to his left and sliding the left side of his head. At this point, it's like three o'clock and I was getting a little bit tired. So it's a little sloppy here, but I know it's not an excuse, but anyway. So as soon as you add like a secondary light source, it definitely helps with the form. You know, trying to get them to read a little more. His forehead seemed a little flat, so I want to add some more volume to it. It's always fun looking for the right brush out of what 100 that I have. Just adding a little more noise. It's kind of like little pores that he has. Since it doesn't look so, it doesn't look flat. I ended up uh, warping it to kind of contours with his shoulders. Same thing here on the dark side, but with dark now. And just erase out what I don't want. Another adjustment layers. Darken the whole thing a little bit. I'm trying to see how it would look if I was to dodge, but. Using dodge tool makes everything look, I don't know, fake.
and some more light. I'm trying to hit like the tops of the form that are facing the light. This part's pretty tricky. If you do too much, it starts looking too busy. And you can't really like see what the details are. So I think I end up like erasing a little bit out. A bit of light coming through the ear. Try and throw some color in the shadows. And with all those overlays, gonna end up losing some of the detail on the right side of the face now. So I'm going back in there and painting those in there. Bounce light. veins here and there. Those wrinkles are actually lit from the wrong side, so I don't know if I fixed that or not, but I acknowledged it. I think it'd be like one more attempt at an eye. Like, nah, looks retarded. So, ended up just leaving it like this.
I think I dropped it all in one layer. Darkened it. And just recropped it and trying to get rid of those lines on the bottom. And just a smudge tool. Just to break up the edge so it's not this perfect cutout. And a little bit of a glow. If you're in a dark room and the light is hitting a surface, usually gives out like a little glow. So I think this is pretty much it. Yeah, so this is the final rendering, I guess. I mean, I could spend more time on it, but it serves its purpose. It could be presented to a client. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Um, let me know if you want to see anything else or if you have questions, ask in the comments. I'll reply whenever I can.